trying to keep it on some level of time, even though we really, really stunk at that so far. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We have done some pretty bad things. So over the years, we've been asked numerous times about how we came up with this concept, what is the social engineering capture the flag, how it started. So we figured the best way to do this is to make it a, make it a speech here, talk about what it is, why we started it, um, some of the facts about the uh, stories that maybe you've never heard, things that we haven't really talked about publicly, and the, um, and the inception of, of this contest. So I don't think we need to care about this, who am I, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's go in into, into some of the most important things. So what is a social engineering attack? I think we all know this by now. You know, this is the basic stuff, but we classified the three different areas, which is either phishing, on-site impersonation, or phone elicitation. And we were approached by DEF CON to see if we can come up with a social engineering competition where we're like, can we legally do all of these? And the answer is no. <laughs> legally we cannot. Legally we can't fish um, uh, on un unexpected users. So we had to take that out of the mix. Impersonation, um, physical, really hard uh, to work into a, a competition that takes uh, place in like two or three days. So that left us with, uh, with phone elicitation. So we came up with the concept of creating a booth, said booth right here in front of me, and um, putting people in it to make live phone calls. That was kind of our concept. And we said, but you know, that's been done a lot, so how can we, how can we make this contest even better and cooler? So we had to figure out what was the goal? What was it that we were trying to accomplish with the SECTF? And our goal was that we wanted to not only have a cool contest that demonstrates the, the danger of social engineering, but something that would be entertaining, something that average person could take a part in. You didn't need to have like super elite, some kind of elite superhuman skills or something that anyone can really jump in and, and take part of that. So um, we split it into two different sectors. First is OSINT or open source intelligence and then the second is the calls here at DEF CON. So we came up with the concept of using Fortune 500 companies in America and only in America because that's what our lawyers said because our lawyers are in America <laughs> so that, that keeps us safe. And, um, and then to pick the, the contestants and to um, uh, give them their targets, give them two or three weeks, we started off with two, uh, to do their OSINT, write a report, and then to use that report to come here and make the phone calls. So our first one was DEF CON 18. And here's probably the biggest story. Dave is not the FBI. Okay? So uh, anyone know the history of Dave and I? No, I really don't want to give you the history here. Okay. I don't want to give you the history because this is going on the DVD and it's not very family friendly. So I'm not going to give you the history. But Dave pranks me all the time. Dave has done some pretty horrible pranks to me all the time. And at the time, so DEF CON 17, we were there and, there and, and they talked to us about making an SE competition. And we had come up with that whole concept, launched it, it made, it made big news. Like we were kind of shocked at how much media was behind the SECTF. But it wasn't positive media. It was media saying that we were going to hack in the companies live at DEF CON and ruin them and humiliate them and we were going to release credit cards and passwords and a lot of fear mongering. So I get this call and the call it starts off with, uh, hello, this is uh, you know, Agent Smith from the FBI. I want to talk to you about your competition. And I go, nice try, Dave. Click. <laughs> Uh, hang up. I'm like, you know, jerk's not going to get me again. I already fell for goatsy. I fell for everything. You name it, I fell for it with Dave, right? Great social engineer I am. So I'm like, okay. So the guy, phone rings again, like a second later. I pick it up. I'm like, Dave, ready told you, not falling for it. He goes, excuse me, sir, I don't know who this Dave person is, but I suggest you not hang up on an FBI agent when he's talking to you. And I'm like, is this Dave Kennedy? <laughs> And he's like, no, I already told you, my name is Agent Smith. I'm like, okay. So let me start all over. Sir, I'm so sorry, what's going on? Anyhow, the, there was two or three really large companies that called the Department of Justice and said that we were going to hack into them and humiliate them publicly. Um, so the FBI called, wanted to know what our contest was all about. So my first phone call right after that was to the EFF. And the EFF 
said, hey, we can analyze, you know, we, can, we, we definitely want to help out. So they looked over everything and they said, the best thing you can do is offer to go to DC, take your computer, all your things and show it to them and, you know, like don't make it a big deal because that's when it looks like it's something, you're doing something wrong. So I did. Went to DC and said, here's all my files, take a look at our rules, take a look at what we're planning to do and I got the unofficial word that, you know, we cannot endorse what you are doing but you are not doing anything that we can stop. To me that was an endorsement. So I was pretty happy with that. <laughs> but the, the lesson I learned with that is Dave is not the FBI. That was DEF CON 18. So we came up with the theme, uh, how strong is your schmooze? And we, you know, this was the art for it. Um, someone fi found that for us and this was our room. Now it was in the RIV. Okay, it was in the RIV. <laughs> Have any of you been to DEF CON on the RIV? So like you get like hepatitis walking on the floor, right? So it was like, like the floor st was sticky. You know, it really was. Like when you walked it was like, you know, you heard it. It was like pretty, yeah. <laughs> and there's Dave again. So this was our room. Can you see that okay? Can you see there's a slide washed out. Do we need light, light adjustment? No? Okay, we're good? Okay, so it was tiny. I mean we are talking like, the table and then maybe there was, what do you think, Nick, like five or six rows? I don't even think that big and, and, and not depth. It was like maybe I think they said un, like a hundred square feet. It was like a closet. You know, it was literally like a closet. And the room was packed. I mean we were, pe goons were coming in saying that we're like getting, you know, we're breaking fire codes all the time. So something really special happened. This is going to sound braggy. Uh, but it's important to understand the, the nature of the competition as it continues to grow. This was DEF CON 18 and in 18 years of DEF CON history they never awarded a black badge to a first year competition. And we were the first contest ever to get a black badge in year one. So that was, thank you, thank you. Yeah. It, it was a huge privilege. I remember when uh, Dark Tangent came in and told me that we were going to be black badged and I was like, I mean I thought you had to be in DEF CON for like two or three years before and he was like, well, you know, the, the excitement. I mean literally it was like a line out, out the door and it was down the hallway and it was like people were sitting on the floor of the RIV. I felt so bad for them. They probably all are dead now. And, and they were waiting to get in the room and then they were lining the floors of the room and it was like 12 million degrees in the room. It was just unbelievable. But it was really, really successful. Um, and something major came out of that besides the DEF CON coolness of it. It was that we had, we had a report that we wrote that showed that it didn't matter if you were skilled or if you were a noob, that social engineering affected every company. And it's something like I knew inside, I think we all kind of knew. You got to think this is, this is six years ago. And we had this report that we wrote that indicated that this was a real problem. And nobody knew it. Like companies didn't understand how to handle vision calls. And it was a real problem. So we're like, okay, this got us a lot of press after DEF CON, but the fear mongering was still there. So um, the next year, DEF CON said, you're going to do it again, right? You're going to do it again? We want to, you know, want to have it again. We're like, yeah, of course. So we came back with the schmooze strikes back, DEF CON 19. Uh, that, was our, that was our theme then. And um, they did something nice for us because of the popularity of the competition. They gave us a much bigger room. Um, uh, they really, really pounded out the space. We had not, not nearly this big. It was probably like 500 square feet which for us was about six times the size of our previous room. So we were really excited and we were like, well, never going to fill this. It's too big. And, um, and again, we had, I should have said this before, DEF CON 18, we were begging people to sign up. Like we were like, please. And people, were signing up left and right for the competition and then they were being told if you compete you're going to get fired. I had four or five competitors that had to drop out last minute because they were told if you compete in this competition when you come back you have no job. So it was, they would call and be like, what, are you, what are we doing? I'm like, dude, don't lose your job over a competition. It's just, a, it's just for fun, right? Don't, don't lose your livelihood. Um, so DEF CON 19, it was like the same thing. The fear mongering had persisted. And people were afraid to sign up for the competition. So it was really hard. We were like begging people and eventually we got, we got 12, 15, I think it was 12 or, or 14 um, contestants and had our companies another amazingly successful year. And now this, this year we wrote the report 
And we found out um, that the first year's report was downloaded about 100,000 times. And that was shocking for us because we were like, you know, I guess when you're in the, when you're in the space, you kind of, you know the problems, but you don't think that it's going to be that, that popular. And the second year, we were like, we really got to write a much better report. Now, I'm not really a good report writer. So, um, so, so we, we struggled with that, of course. And the second year report just totally, it like, blew the numbers off the first year report. And, but the problem was still there. And this was the thing that kept fascinating us, is that we were thinking maybe because of all the press, it would get better, right? That maybe there would be some training. But it actually got worse. I mean, it got a lot worse. Like, the problem started to escalate as more and more skill came into the market. And we saw that the problem was, was actually getting worse, not better. So uh, fear mongering pursued, right, at past DEF CON 19. Um, so this was uh, the year that we said, what can we do to make some changes to DEF CON 20? And we thought one of the things that would be really cool is to pit men against women. So we spent one year from the end of DEF CON 19 to where we had our signups kind of grooming the community, talking about women in SE and trying to get women to join in the competition. And we had a handful. It wasn't an equal split, right? They were, we didn't have a lot of women who joined the competition. Um, so the guys like obliterated this year. You know, they really did. And uh, you would have thought, actually I should have asked, how many people really would have thought that women would have won? Right? I, I guaranteed 100%, right? That's what I would have thought. But it didn't happen this year and it really was just because of having uh, guys in the competition who were skilled or professional and, and this being a lot of the women who had joined their first time ever stepping into a booth or making a phone call for these purposes. Um, but some, some interesting data came out of DEF CON 20 which is, you know, women are scary. Um, <laughs> you know, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, what species we are, they scared us because although they didn't win, um, they, th we, I always tell this story. We had this one young girl who was, who was in the booth and she did this, she said, it's my first time ever making a phone call like this. Um, I'm just going to play dumb. And in my head, I didn't say this to her, in my head I thought, that's just not going to work. You know, like why, why would you, you know, do that? And she got in the booth and this literally was her pretext. Her company was Dell and she had called them and um, she got a guy on the phone and she said, I'm a, just a stupid college girl and I, I don't know how to pick any kind of technology. Can you help me? And this guy spent seven minutes telling her why he was the king of the universe <laughs> for helping her with any technical problem because she was just a silly college girl, right? And every time she would self-deprecate and he would puff up, she would go, so what kind of antivirus do you use? And then he would say it. Oh, but what kind of you know, operating system is the best? Oh, then he would say it. And, you know, and then she went, it was so ridiculous. So then she got done with all the tech questions. And then she says, uh, you know, I want to get more points. I want to you know, see if I can get all the flags. So she says, you know, I'm thinking of starting a company. And uh, she, was, uh, she was Latino and she used this. And, and she sounded Latino. And she used this to her benefit. She said to the guy, you know, me and my cousins, we're going to start a cleaning company, a janitorial service. Uh, well, who do you use for janitorial services? And the guy spilled it, you know, for who, who Dell used at his office. Then she goes, and my one cousin's going to come and he's going to do pest control. So who do you use for pest control? And he spilled it. And then it was, I have another guy, who, another cousin who's a security guard and we're thinking of adding security guards. So when she was done, she was a college girl who was starting a janitorial pest control security guard computer repair vending machine delivery service. And the guy was still like, oh, I'm the king, I can help you. And I don't know how is this even working? And, and the guy was just like, you know, I'll tell you anything you want. I mean, she could have just kept going, you know, it was just crazy. So, so we, you know, we obviously wanted to, wanted to revisit this topic. Um, yeah, that was DEF CON 20. So um, uh, some other things occurred at DEF CON 20 that changed the, the scene for us. And, and this is probably one of the big ones. Um, we got visited by the uh, chief of the NSA at the time, General Keith Alexander. Uh, he had come to DEF CON uh, because at the same time, and this is not the nature of this talk so I won't go too deep into it, we helped start a kids competition. And that got a lot of really good press because we were teaching kids about social engineering, critical thinking, lock picking. And 
General Alexander came to DEF CON, they asked to meet with me, and we met, and then I invited him to the room. I said, why don't you come see the, see the uh, adult version of this competition? And he came in the room, actually it was kind of funny, I should tell you the whole story. I'm sitting at the desk, and uh, Def, somebody from DEF CON calls and says, um, hey, can you come back? General Alexander wants to talk to you. And I said, well, I'm in the middle of a call, you know, like we're, you know, we're doing the, the thing. And, and she said, maybe you don't understand what I just asked you. <laughs> General Alexander wants to see you. Maybe you should just come. So I hang up. I tell the room, hey, guys, can you just give me like 10 minutes? I'll be right back. I run over there and he says, you know, he wants to come and visit, visit the room. So uh, I said, when? He goes, I don't know. It will be sometime. So we're sitting there. We're doing calls. We had our youngest female c competitor ever. She was 17. She was in the booth. And these like, you know, big guys with the black suits and little earpieces come in and they're like, we're going to clear the room now. I'm like, what do you mean clear the room? And they're like, you know, check for weapons. So they do all that stuff and then General Alexander comes in. He comes in front of the thing. He listens to the call and then he says the magic words which changed all of this for us which were, you're doing the best thing you can do for this country. Keep doing it. We need this. And hands me a director of the NSA challenge coin and it was like all over the press and that changed everything, right? All of a sudden. So the year one, we had this rule. If you were a company that was a target that we would offer you all the data we collected, the, the OSINT reports, the call data. We'd give it all to you for free. So anything you want, you get it. We'll help you fix the problem. We'll even give you an hour of consulting for nothing, just to help you fix this problem. That's been the rule since day one. Guess how many companies called me in DEF CON 18? Zero. zero. Exactly zero. Guess how many companies called me in DEF CON 19? Zero. <laughs> DEF CON 20, this happens. Guess how many companies call me out of 10? Nine. Okay, nine. Nine. So very close. But nine. One was like, I'm never talking to you again. They still hate us, okay? Uh, <laughs> um, nine out of 10 companies called. Then I got invited to the Pentagon. Can you believe this? The heck, look at me. <laughs> the heck, right? So I get invited to the Pentagon to debrief like 35 like four star generals and heads of state and, and it, it, you know, like just ridiculous. Right? I go, so let me tell you this story. Anyone ever been to the Pentagon? Okay, so you know, you know that like these things are not allowed, right? So I'll tell you this is a crazy, so I didn't know. So I, I walk in, I'm being all like, you know, tourist, like, hey, we're the Pentagon, this is cool, right? And, and I get to the room and I'm standing in the room that's about, let's say, half of this size and it is just wall to wall monitor. There's no windows, you know, you're on the inside, wall to wall monitors. And I have all these guys and gals sitting in front of me, and um, and and all, you know they have my reports for the last three years printed out, and and they have them all there, and I'm like, well, they're really prepared, and I go, this is so cool, I gotta take a photo, <laughs> and I whip my cell phone out, <laughs> and and I just see this big, huge black guy, he's got a phone, he's got a phone, I'm like, what's gonna happen? I'm like. No, why, why is this so bad? I'm like, and I'm like, and they're like, put the phone. I'm like, and they're, why is that not in a locker? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know anything about phone lockers. And they're like, didn't you see the big sign that said turn all technology? And I'm like, I didn't read it. I wasn't paying attention. I'm in the Pentagon. So I got escorted out of that room to a special room with these big lockers and I had to lock all my stuff in there. And uh, I wasn't allowed to bring my computer or anything so I should have thought about that. Anyhow, besides that um, and not getting tased, which was a really good thing, um, we were able to, to tweet about that, talk about that um, on our social media. And that, that changed the nature of this competition. So the competition was the same, but the way it was looked at, and not by us, right? Not our community. Our community looked at it the same way. But the way it was looked at by the outside world was now what we wanted originally, which was we're here to help not to hurt you guys, right? We're trying to prove that social engineering is a big problem and it's not getting fixed and we, 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 can, we can do it. We can fix it. We just have to work hard and things like this happened. One of the other great stories, Dan, I'm going to do it, uh, that happened at that DEF CON was uh, <laughs> we had a guy in the booth and he um, picked an employee out of, the, out of a hat on the website for this target company that he had. And as he was making his call, this was the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting some of the story messed up, I've been told recently, but I'll tell you my version of it at least. Um, he used the pretext of uh, there's a big, huge security conference called DEF CON, and we, we may be a target, 
and I want to make sure that our computers are all secure so we can't get attacked by DEF CON. Thanks, Dan. We had fear mongering already. Now he, you know, so, so um, he's calling as this employee who was a tech guy. So the pretext would make sense, right? Tech guy in the company calling the, the stores, making sure they're up to, up to par. And it's working well. It's kind of working well. Well, little did we know, someone's texting Josh, saying, Josh, what the heck are you doing? Why are you calling us about DEF CON? And Josh goes, I'm not calling you about DEF CON. And then some of his buddies go, Josh, what's going on? We're getting calls about all this. And Josh is three doors down at DEF CON listening to a speech. <laughs> so that's the real Josh on your right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's the fake Josh. Dan, the milkman, sitting right here made that call. And they came in. And at first, you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a little crazy. At first we were like, they come in like an entourage and I'm like, it's him. He's in the booth, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, I was like, well. So, and then we got a picture and they were really cool about it. So it was a really, really interesting story. Something that probably only happened at, at DEF CON, you know, a little, little weirdness like that. Um, some other cool things that occurred that DEF CON have nothing to do with the CTF, but we got to ha meet and hang out with uh, Infected Mushroom, which was really cool. I just added that in because it was something Vegasy. And that was really cool. They played there that year. Um, but we weren't satisfied with the men versus women results because what I wanted was an even split. Like I wanted 50% women and 50% men so we can have a true, you know, true look at who would be the, the winner. So we, we launched in DEF CON 21 the um, uh, who's the deadliest social engineer competition. And again, we promoted that it was uh, going to be a male versus female competition and we really wanted to bump up having equal, equal women to men and, um, and then the other thing we would do is the one target would be given to both a male and a female. So we pick a target company and a male and a female would, ha would not as a team, they would both be assigned that same target. And then a coin flip would determine who goes first at DEF CON. So they both have to prepare a report, they both come to DEF CON and then a coin flip determines who goes first. Um, so who do you think won this year? Yeah, so here's the thing we learned. Women scare us. <laughs> Same thing we learned last year. Uh, and they do because it was, um, it wasn't just a win. It was like, um, uh, like an obliteration. It was like a, a 700 points in between the, the woman and then the next winner, which was the second place, which was a woman, <laughs> and then the guy below her was like, like another three. So it was like a thousand point difference. So we walked away with our tail in between our legs and had to try to redeem ourselves the next year. Um, so there were some really interesting things uh, that came out of that data also because what we found uh, that was really fascinating for me is as guys, we tend to try to always use authority based pretexts. Right, we come in, I'm the boss, I'm the manager, um, here's what I'm going to tell you to do and the women came in as uh, um, uh, not with the authority but they came in and uh, not, you know, this, I know this word it seems like a little more submissive uh, to, to the way it appeared to the caller and that worked really, really well. I mean it was like amazing, right? They let the guy's egos on the phone go nuts and even when they had another woman on the phone they let their egos get bigger and then they always succeeded. And I'm like going, hey, these women got something to this. I got to try this. And I did. I tried it and worked. And it worked so well. It's amazing. Right? So ego suspension, really, really interesting topic. Um, but that really worked well for them in the same exact pretext. So you can take the same pretext like I'm, I'm from calling from corporate IT and I'm doing a, an IT survey because we're about to um, launch some new product update or something like that. And you have a guy do it and you have a girl do it and the results were that if the guy used authority and, and the girl uh, used ego suspension that she always had a, a bigger score. So it was really, really fascinating um, data set that year. This was the winner, Lily. Um, she, she was just amazing um, at, at her call and, um, and really fascinating. She did this thing. Also, uh, anyone ever hear of a researcher, social uh, psychologist researcher named Amy Cootie? Okay, a couple, right? So she does this thing about power posing. Uh, you know, like you stand like a superhero and you know, you, yeah, you, you stand in a place that make the confident people would stand and you do it for two to three minutes before something that makes you really nervous and it creates confidence feelings in you. And she was doing this. 
like in the room. She was like, dun, dun, dun. And I'm like, she's a little weird. I didn't have no clue what she was doing, right? But afterwards, when I asked her, like, you know, what, what? She said she had this, this confident pose and it helped her feel really confident and she got in the booth and had never done a social engineering call ever in her life and just totally owned it. It was really, really phenomenal. Uh, some other things we did there, I just, I mean, you might as well share all the stupid stories that happened is, um, yeah, so I, I had this concept for the kids CTF uh, and, 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 you know, sometimes these things come to me really late at night um, and, and they, they seem like great ideas but I should, I should do what I tell my clients is wait 30 seconds before I take action. I didn't. I had this idea that it would be really cool for the kids competition that their final exercise that they have to run through the room and put a code in a box to win and they have, they're getting shot at by snipers with ri Nerf rifles um, while they're doing this running through. So I tweeted, any snipers coming to DEF CON that want to shoot children, DM me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Who said it? Yeah, that's exactly, yes, I know, believe me, okay, I'm not the smartest bulb in the bright, whatever, you get it, okay? <laughs> Proof in the pudding right there. So I get two calls. Uh, one was from my buddy at the FBI saying, did you read that last tweet out loud before you sent it? And I went, yeah, it's fine. And I'm reading it as he's, I'm like, oh, dear Lord. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I didn't put Nerf in there. And he's like, no, no, you didn't. And we're wondering what you're talking about. I'm like, I have a really good explanation, man. And so I deleted that tweet. But in the meantime, I actually got contacted by a guy, uh, Bones, I don't know if he's here. And he's like, hey, I'm coming to Death Con. I'll shoot kids. What do you got in mind? <laughs> And uh, we hired him, right? So, and he still works with our group. I don't know what's wrong with me, right? Uh, I said, you do understand I met with a Nerf rifle, right? And he's like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And I'm like, okay, that was way too calm. Like, so anyhow, so those are the Nerf rifles I bought. Um, and, and then something else really cool happened that year. Uh, I had been, you know, our, we have a podcast that we do once a month, uh, the Social Engineer Podcast. And uh, thank you, thank you, one listener. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> By the way, no, seriously, how many, how many people listen to it? Okay, I have a, I have a serious question. Dave, you here? Dave, Dave. Okay, no, 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 no voting, no voting, no voting. Okay, listen. Do you guys like Bruce Hornsby or not? If you like Bruce Horn no, if you if you like Bruce Hornsby, raise your hand. If you want Bruce Hornsby. Okay, and how many of you would rather not have any more Bruce Hornsby on the podcast? Oh, I got people raising two hands and legs. No, no, I think look, 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 keep come on guys, come on, support me. <laughs> I talked them into it. Okay, so um, so we always try to have like interesting guests on the podcast and people that we think we can learn something from because of their jobs. And we had a lot of psychologists and researchers. Um, well, I reached out to Apollo Robbins. If you don't know who he is, you should check him out. He's an amazing, uh, he's called the Gentleman Thief. He's one of those guys like you've probably seen his videos and just don't know it's him. Like he'll take your wallet off you while he's actually talking to you. He'll take your belt off. And you won't know it. He'll take your watch off. And I, I had reached out to him and started the conversation with him and said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you came to Vegas? And because, and, you know, this, that's where he is. And I'm like, and we did a podcast, live podcast. And he's like, yeah, that may be cool, you know? So we talked about how we can logistically work it out and we made it work. And then, he's, and then I, I threw this crazy thing like, what if we do a speech together? You know, we can do a speech about social engineering and what you do and how it works together. And he's like, yeah, sure, that'd be cool. I'm like, you know, I'm like, this is awesome. So, um, so we, we did. We had, a, we had planned a speech and we were in a little room, much smaller than this, and it, it got a lot of real big interest. So what ended up happening is uh, DEF CON moved us to, um, to a really, really large room. And we were in the room and um, we had some malfunctions of our projectors. And because of that, we were like sitting there, what are we going to do? We had all this stuff planned. And he's like, well, let's just, you know, improvise. And he pulls a guy out of the audience and like takes his belt out, takes his watch off, <laughs> takes his wallet out right in front of the audience, right? And that was the, that was the speech. Um, uh, but, but he was working, he was working with an actor at the time who uh, ha he had told the actor, by the way, I'm giving a speech with this guy all about social engineering and you may want to, you know, come and, and hear it. So he called me and said, I'd like to bring somebody into DEF CON. 
but we got to do it kind of on the sly. So, um, so we had got a great chance to meet Will Smith, which was really cool. <laughs> which was really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Actually, he is like so awesome in person. Yeah, it was really neat. And he's just a neat, great guy. And it was for the movie Focus um, that he was, uh, he was uh, training with Apollo. And then um, we, had a, had a, we talked about DISC. Tim talked about DISC. And he wanted to learn about DISC. So we did a little DISC lesson in the back. And then, oh, this is a great story. He says, so he had a bodyguard and all this stuff. He was supposed to come in for like the, the, the speech and then we were going to take some pictures and he was going to leave so not everybody was going to know. And he was like, man, this community is pretty cool. Can you take me to the, to the DEF CON shop area? And I'm like, yeah, you realize there's no way to keep you secret when we go walking down the hallway. And he's like, yeah, you know, it'd be cool. So I'm like, okay, you know, so we're walking down the hallway and this drunk guy comes running up and he goes, dude, you look just like Will Smith. <laughs> the ladies must love you. And Will goes, yeah, I do okay. And the guy's like, fist bump. Whoa, man. That's, and he walks away and I'm going. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't even need me. Like, that was epic, man. Like, and he's like, ah, oh, you get used to it, you know? And I'm like, that was the coolest thing ever. Right? So, um, yeah, that was, that was pretty neat. That was a good, a good year. A good year. So then last year we had done, I felt like we'd done all the data collection we could in different, different types of, of SE. So I thought how can we make this really difficult for the contestants? So I, I came up with the idea of tag teams. Two people in the booth at one time. Right? I thought that's going to make it super hard. In addition um, that we said no phone spoofing and you had to hand the call off a minimum of three times in one call. You had to hand it off three times. To get any points, you had to hand the call off three times in between. I'm like, this is definitely going to help the companies prove that maybe they can combat a social engineer. No. Yeah, you're shaking your head. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, um, so these were some of the things we did. No spoofing. Made them sit in, in the, 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 so they, <laughs> two people in this booth. <laughs> Uh, sorry. I'm not really sorry. Uh, you, know, you know, people don't really shower a lot when they come here. So you can imagine this confined, airtight space with a heat lamp up there and they're sweating and we gave them 30 minutes. And <laughs> uh, yeah, that was great. Okay, so what did we learn? What did we learn from it? Well, let me tell you some of the stories from that. Um, we had some amazing things that happened. I'll tell you one of the best um, uh, uh, rebuttals I heard. L a lady on the, on the phone, the, the target, said, hey, why, if you're calling from corporate headquarters, why is your number not corporate headquarters? Why is it? And it was like we were using Google Voice, so it's a random number. And he goes, oh, that's because I'm training my coworker. And he introduces her and says, and we're on Adobe Connect uh, line. And that's why the number uh, looks different. And the lady goes, oh, okay. And then he was able to hand the call off like nonstop, right? I think what was the I think we had 20 something handoffs in one call was the was the max. Like and it was just literally like so now like you know Brian's going to ask you a question. Oh, now Chris going to ask you a question. Oh, now. and it was like and the lady on the phone was just like, "Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay." And I'm like, "How is this working?" Like we tried everything, everything to make it a disadvantage for the social engineers. At the end of the day, they still won, right? So it was it was crazy. Um, also, how many of you were here for the Thursday competition? Okay, a few of you. You guys, uh, hopefully, hope many of you heard about it. That started because we did this. Um, well, not because I handcuffed uh, cute blonde, but because we started just throwing together. We were there Thursday, and we were there early, and we're like, what can we do to have fun? So I had some handcuffs, which, by the way, is another funny story. Um, on my carry on luggage, I had duct tape, handcuffs, um, <laughs> I, I, this is going to sound weird. I had some almond oil. Um, <laughs> it's good for the skin. Okay, really, it's good for the skin. I had duct tape, <laughs> handcuffs, almond oil, and and four Nerf guns, and um, and and, and uh, some uh, uh, tweezers and hairpins, and and it goes through the thing, and the guy goes, "Whose bag is this?" I'm like, "That's mine." And he zips it open, and he goes, "Really?" <laughs> and I go. Dude, I'm going to Vegas. He goes, oh. <laughs> he zipped it close and gave it back to me. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, it was like, it wasn't even, he didn't even think about it. He was like, zipped it. I was like, oh. And I'm like, 
that works? Like, next time I'm on a butt, like, you know, like all sorts of horrible things in my bag. Like, I'm going to Vegas, man, you know? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we heard what I know. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> That's crazy. So last year was so popular on Thursday that we decided to make the competition that we did this year, which was Mission SE Impossible. Um, and, and it went really, really well. Like, so well that uh, Jeff came in before and he said all he heard about was how awesome it was, so he wants to make it bigger and better next year, of course. It means more work for us, but it's going to be back next year, so I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, this is how the booth looked with two people in it. Pretty tight, right? Pretty tight. And, uh, and, and our room was constantly packed. Um, we had a 45 minute wait time outside the room at all times. So you guys who were there complaining to DEF CON is what got us this room this year, which is packed and there's a wait line all the time. So that's pretty awesome because you, know, you don't really move up in the room size world in DEF CON unless you're really, really needed for that. And when we got that because of you guys, not, not because of us, right? Um, and you can see this is the way the room always looked. It was also the first year that we tried something new. We, we threw together some speeches for, for the village just one day. And DEF CON heard all the people talking about the people that we had invited in. People like Jason Street, um, people like Michelle gave a talk, Kevin Mitnick gave a talk, Dave gave a talk. Um, and it got popular so they, it, they actually threw together a camera crew and, t and videoed those speeches and they ended up on the DEF CON DVD. And it was something that was highly requested so that is why we have our beautiful um, camera goddess and camera god in the room for the last two days uh, filming all of our speeches because now it's like an official track for DEF CON. So that's pretty, pretty cool for us uh, to have that happen. So here was DEF CON 23 and we're like what can we do to make it bigger and better um, and or just at least make it a little bit different. So this year if you were in the room at all you know that our theme was telecommunications. And it was something that we really wanted to see. Now when I made this deck, of course, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. So um, I'll just give you a couple of the, the quick synopsis from this, from this week. Um, <clears throat> we had a guy that, that literally looked at about nine minutes, into the, uh, nine minutes left. He said to the audience, I'm going to be the only person in DEF CON history to get zero. Because there was like no points on the board. At eight minutes in, he got one person that was willing to answer everything for him and he totally cleaned house in eight minutes, right? I mean, just totally amazing. Um, we also found a few other things. We found a company on the good side that after the, the contestant got them to go to our website twice with two different employees, the third employee he tried it on, the guy paused and he goes, oh, I'm sorry, I'm being told I'm not allowed to go to that site. So they had internal communications somehow and warned the employees quickly, we're talking within a 25 minute span of phone calls, that they were no longer allowed to go to that website. It was blocked. Um, that was really cool. We also found out that my website gets blocked for porn, which is really weird because there's none on there. Um, and one of the people today tried to go to our site and they said they couldn't get to it. It's not <laughs> Uh, but we figured out what it was. Some, uh, the, the, the white canvas guys helped us figure it out. Um, it, there's some articles we write on how social engineering is used by child traffickers because they do use a lot of these skills unfortunately for the negative and some of the content in those articles can get uh, blocked by, by content. But um, uh, and then let me see. Then we had two contestants that just didn't show. They didn't show. They weren't here. So we asked the audience, anybody want to stand up and try it? Now this is day two after seeing people sweat and suffer in the booth and we have seven people up here all begging for a chance to get in the booth, right? And, um, and we did a lottery because we figured how are we going to pick this? So we did a lottery and we picked out two names out of the hat and we had Laney and Whitney um, get in the booth and uh, I don't know if anyone here for the Whitney call? That was utterly ridiculous, right? I mean it was like utterly, she doesn't even do this for a living. I was like what is going on here? Totally really just o opened the doors wide on that and uh, just a really friendly wonderful conversation. So a really great year. I mean a really, really great year. Unbelievable year for the SECTF. So what are some of the things that we've learned? Um, and this is, this is probably some of the big points for us guys that corporations, they're still really bad at social engineering. They're not training their employees. We're not seeing a, a, big, a big shift in that. Uh, online information leakage, it's, it's huge. 
Every year, I, can, I, wish, I wish I can share some of these points with you. I really do. But it would, be, uh, it would be very bad for me to do so. But every year, we get reports in where people have found, I mean, I can tell you some anonymously, anonymous tips. Uh, one year, we had a contestant that found a, uh, you know, you go to the intranet page and you click, um, you know, get help, click here for help. He had clicked there and a document came up about how to log into the intranet. And the badge that they used in their example was a working badge number and password. And he was able to log into their intranet. Right? You know, we're talking like 2014 or 13, whenever it was, and these things are still out there. And then 2015, we found a company this year that literally has their ISOs. So the ISOs that they use to burn their corporate computers online to the public. <laughs> yeah which means you can download the ISOs and basically figure out you know, what software is automatically installed and things like that. Just things that we were found were, were mind numbing. You know, after all the breaches, you think it would get better. And this is probably one of our big points that we learn. We also learn it doesn't take a pro to be successful. You don't have to be a, a pro. You know, we had, we've had complete noobs get in the, in the booth and totally own it. We've had people, I mean, today's a great example. Uh, uh, Whitney got in there, never made a call before, and she was amazing, right? And all the contestants that, that don't do this for a living get in there, and they still are so successful. There was nobody that failed. There was nobody that got nothing, right? So that is shocking, right? You would think that if maybe if you're new to this, you would get nothing. There's nobody in this competition that got nothing. So, um, and, and probably the biggest one for us is internal pretexts are probably the most successful. Acting like a fellow employee, regardless if you're spoofing or not, just works. It just works. Takeaway facts, women are scary. <laughs> Probably the biggest takeaway fact. Trust the FBI when they call and don't call them Dave Kennedy. Okay, that's another big takeaway fact. Um, you can be our next contestant. I want to see some new faces in that list next year. Okay, I want to see people joining up for this. Uh, we do have rules and we have lawyers. That's important to remember, okay, because um, we're not going for like passwords and credit cards and things like that. We have some pretty strict rules that are, that are guided by our lawyers. Why? So there's, there's a couple main reasons and it is because we don't want the company or the employee to feel victimized. And there's always a level of embarrassment when it comes to social engineering. That's granted, right? But we don't want someone to feel victimized. Second is, I don't want to be in jail. So we have rules for that reason. And I don't want the contestants to be in jail. So we have rules. So when we follow them, everybody gets along and remains out of jail. Um, even when we make it really, really hard, like no spoofing, two people in the booth having to hand it off, we still win as social engineers. And um, remember your cell phone is not welcome in the Pentagon. Okay, that's probably a lesson you should all know for now. Uh, so this is our, what's going to happen next year? We got some things planned. I can't release them yet because I'm not 100% confirmed. But next year, uh, we hope to change this competition up a little bit and try some things that we haven't tried yet before. So uh, stay tuned for it. Everyone asks, how do I learn uh, where I can sign up? So social-engineer.org, right? If you just go to the website, is that on there? Yeah, social-engineer.org or our Twitter accounts. And if you follow them, we announce it. This year, the registration was open from January to June. So if you, if you tell me, like, I missed it, <laughs> I, I can't help you, okay? If you don't go on the internet for four months, there's nothing I can do for you, okay? So, and don't give me a card and say, hey, can you call me or email me when you release it? Because I'm not your secretary and I can't do that. So just go on the website and Twitter and, and follow it. What's your podcast? Podcast is the Social Engineer Podcast. It is on the .org site. There's a big thing on top that says podcast. It's on iTunes also. And I will say this because I'm really proud of this point. Uh, we, are, we are PG rated. We're on month 74 months. No, they're all been edited, so they're PG rated. So, um, so I, I keep my podcast PG rated because I have kids that listen to it. And one of the things I hear from a lot of people in the community that listen to it is they love the fact that they can listen to it in, at work, you know, and they don't have to worry about the boss walking in and you're talking about something obscene. Um, or they can listen to it in the car with their kids and it's entertaining. So we keep it PG rated. And they've tried to ruin this. I had a couple podcasts where Dave and, and Jordan just like literally said the F curse like 45 times. It took me like six hours to edit it. But I still edited it, you know, because, because I feel that that's an important part 
to make sure that the podcast can be listened to by anybody who wants it, especially kids. I think social engineering is really important to teach our children. Uh, not be, we want them to know these things. They can, it can protect them against predators and also give them some really useful skills for the future. Any other questions before we move on? Podcast. Oh, yeah. So talking about the podcast, if you want to know what it's all about and what it's like, tomorrow we're doing a live podcast here in this room. Has anyone ever heard of Paul Wilson? Our Paul Wilson? A couple guys. Okay, so from, he's from The Real Hustle in the UK. He's also a really, really great street magician and illusionist. Uh, he came in, and he's here for the podcast tomorrow. So we got him in, so he'll be here with us. Um, uh, he's, a good, he's a good friend of mine. He wrote the forward for my first book, um, and, and we've kind of kept in contact ever since. And I was like, hey, you're going to be anywhere in the U.S.? Let's get together for the podcast. And, and, he's, and he's here for that. So if you're interested in that, 10.30 tomorrow morning in this room, it'll be Q&A for that. Did you have a question? Someone re my, got, my question for you is um, I'm curious uh, with this challenge, um, with this game, have you ever had uh, an individual that would speak through an interpreter who's worked through a translator? Uh, because I'm deaf and we're deaf and uh, you know, we're taking in your information here through an interpreter. Um, and wondering if that would add to the challenge. Uh, no, I've never had, but I bet it would be an amazing vector. Um, I bet if we can use, what is that system called, TT, TTL, a TTL system, or an interpreter, I, I bet it would work really, really well because of sympathy and assistance themes. I'd be more than willing to, to, let, to try it if you want to join in next year. I'd be more than willing to try it. I really would. I encourage you to try it. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that would be awesome. Other questions? I saw I, uh, Dave raised his hand, but I'm not going to call on him because it's probably going to be a prank. Or, you know, what he did one time? He modified the seat in his car, so the heater, so you can boil water on it. And then he had me sit on it, and and I almost charred my pants. I mean, you know, we're talking water boiling. Yeah, I thought I was sick, and I thought I was going to get sick in his car. So I kept leaning forward like, oh man, dude, give me some more AC. And he would put the AC on and I leaned forward too much once and I realized, wait, I'm only hot when I lean back. And he started laughing. And I'm like, what did you do? And I go, oh, my body's on fire. And it was like my pants were crispy. And he's like, dude, I got you so good. How, what is wrong with you? Who goes through all that trouble to modify a heater in your seat just to get me? Yes, yeah, sir. I cannot hear you at all. Can someone give me the last part of that? I swear I did not. Yes. Okay, so if I... If I understand the question, you're asking how much information and what information we're looking for from a company. So we give every contestant a flag list. And it's things like, who's your janitorial service? Who's your dumpster service? Who, um, what kind of OS do you have? Do you have a cafeteria on site? What's your antivirus, your browser, your versions? Uh, when do you get paid? How long you've worked for the company? The list of complete flags is in the report which is also on the social-engineer.org site. You can look at the previous years. This year's report probably won't come out until October. I'm looking at Michelle to see if she's flipping me off. October or so. It, December, October, maybe September now because she's pushing it. Okay, so October. It will come out in October and the report, will, the, the flags will be... <laughs> I made an executive decision. You see how that works? On the plan? So... Uh, um, yeah, authoritative didn't work. She's thinking right now how to kill me. So, <laughs> but um, we try for October, and then we have a, a, a free webinar, guys, that we host every year. We host a free webinar, and we go through the results step by step and very in a lot of detail. So if you follow the the Twitter uh, account, then we will be tweeting about the webinar, and you can sign up for it. 
And even if you can't attend, you can get the, uh, the, the, um, the download, the video download. Yes, ma'am. So the question was, do we look at changing flags to make it more difficult? Is that the way to increase the bar? And, um, and, and the, as much as I would like to say yes to that, my, my issue with is the lawyers are pretty good at telling us what line not to go near, right? So if you, if you were ever at DEF CON 17, I was there and I remember sitting in the audience at the SC competition that was there, I was not running it, and they were calling college girls and getting their credit card numbers over the speakers. And I said, I don't want to ever be in that position, right? Because if that was my daughter or my son and it was their credit card, I'd be pretty ticked, right? I want to find out who did that and do some not nice things to them. So I don't want that to ever occur. So the flag list that we have are flags that as a social engineer, I have used every single one of them to break into, write a fish for, or vish a company. But they're not, um, What's your password? What's your you know? And 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 we're also really strict on no personal details on the target themselves. So Sally answers the phone. I don't want to know her date of birth. I don't want to know where she lives. I don't want to know her husband's name, her dog's name. Because it's not about proving that Sally is stupid, right? It's about and it's not about stupidity at all. It's about proving that companies need to do more awareness training on SE. So if there's a way, and if you have suggestions on flags that we can add that you think would increase the, the difficulty but not step over that line, I will gladly show them to the lawyers to get the, um, to get the you can just email me. I will gladly do that. Sir. Thought about what? Oh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, no, never. Um, uh, we, uh, the question was, have we ever thought about warning the companies that we call? Um, no. Uh, I guess that would add a real layer of complexity, right? Like send them a, a card, you know, dear company, you are going to be a target this weekend, love, social engineer, and, uh, and then see what happens, you know. <laughs> that might, that may, may work, right? I don't know, maybe we'll, tr maybe we'll try it I, you know, if we want to make it much more difficult. Um, um, I had never thought about doing that. You know, also I think that after the report comes out, the companies are more prone to look at the, the data and say, wow, this was useful. Whereas when you base it on fear, they get, you know, they get hurt and then it's, and then it's. Right. But the retail company's hiring the mystery shopper. We're, <laughs> we're, we're not, we're not exactly being hired, so. <laughs> yes, sir. No, I mean, use the hotel as a target? No, never did that. No. Um. Well, you know, the, the goal was, um, again, was to, to show as a country how big social engineering is as a problem. So we never did small calls like getting a free pizza to the room or something like that. I mean, we do those, but that's usually just when I'm hungry at night. And, you know, I don't really do it, uh, I don't really do it for the competition. No, we never used hotels. Uh, that's interesting. I, I, you know, that's a good point. I never used hotels, so maybe uh, entertainment industry is another as a vector for one year. It's a good one. No, no, we never call them uh, because that to me feels like extortion. Yeah, we don't. Uh, no, uh, I'll tell you what happens a lot of times. We have people from those companies sitting in the audience, and we don't know. And afterwards they come up, and this has happened this weekend. Here's my card, can we talk when the data is ready? I said, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, or it goes out on Twitter. I mean this report got down, last year's report got downloaded 125,000 times. It's all over the place, right? So people are reading about it. Somebody in their security sector of that company is talking about it and then they're saying, hey, we need to talk to these guys because in the report, on the website, on the podcast, we are saying over and over, Call us. We will we will gladly open up and talk to you about this, and we will give you the data. Yeah, it, it, I know. Yeah, it's not. I know it's not uh, the best, but according to my legal advice, is I shouldn't just reach out to a company and say, "By the way, we SE'd you. I hope you're not pissed, and we have data if you'd like it." Um, let them make the first step. You know, 
it's like you don't want to you don't want to instigate if they're not happy. There was one year where a company um, uh, said they were going to sue us. Um, and they were really upset, and they were going to file a suit, really large, like millions of dollars. And it was like a quick email, and it went away. Um, you know, just they just were really upset. So we don't want to ever instigate and rock that boat uh, to to cause that. But um, that's my that's my clock. Okay, so I have more time because who wants to hear Dave speak? I mean, literally. Look, no one even. Uh, no, just kidding. Okay, one more question, and then we'll get Dave set up. That hurts. That hurts real bad, okay? That hurts real bad. Okay, guys, thank you very much.